I really hope the lighting in this video comes out okay because the light coming in from outside is kind of gross and I don't have the greatest interior lighting setup because I don't go on camera that often. Anyway, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and welcome to the postmortem for the uh, recent Let's Make a Game Bullet Hell Edition uh, video series that I just finished making. And this is going to be the, uh, the postmortem for those who are unaware of the term. Uh, this is just a little report that is traditional to be done at the end of game dev series, and also I assume at the end of um, other projects and other industries, but I'm only familiar with those done in game dev. And uh, today is where I am going to talk about the things that went right, the things that did not go right, the things that went in between, and just general comments on how the project went as a whole. As usual, I've got myself my, uh, my game dev notebook, and I've been writing down some notes as the series has been progressing, and hopefully we will uh, make it through make it through all this in a, in a decent amount of time, hopefully in one take, because I am, um, I like it when I, when I have to do minimal editing for this kind of thing. <clears throat> so I suppose the best place to start uh, would be some feedback that I actually got on the, uh, the last postmortem that I did, and that is that um, it would make sense to have shown video of the actual game during this video, and I don't remember why I didn't, other than that I just didn't remember, I think. It's possible that I did that on purpose and it was some stupid reason, but um, anyway, I will be doing that today because that is something that would make sense to do. This is what the game looks like. It is a, I don't want to call it a generic bullet hell because that would be kind of like, be, like down on myself, but um, it's it's definitely a bullet hell. You fly around uh, taking out your anger on all the creepy crawlies that dare cross your path. Possibly this might be a little bit autobiographical just like the last one. Anyway, so, um, I would like to start with making an episode zero for this series, which I think was actually a really good idea. And anybody who's ever going to do a follow along game dev series on the internet like this ever should also do an episode zero for project management. And not just because spending time on project management is generally a good idea, regardless of whether or not you're posting your progress on the internet, but also because it sort of sets the tone for the production series as a whole. I was actually able to follow, and I'll get into this more at other points in the video, but I was actually able to follow the um, the schedule I laid out for myself really closely um, for this project. I want to say that I had the whole thing planned to be like 36 videos and it ended up being 41, which at the end of the day, that's pretty good, um, considering how many things it is possible to go wrong um, during an adventure like this. Um, most of the excess videos ended up being things such as uh, like extra bug fixing days and that sort of thing. There weren't anything major, like I'm just going to add a completely new set of features that uh, wasn't planned at the beginning. I There were a couple of things that got cut, uh, mostly pretty minor, but there wasn't any like huge change in direction over the course of the project, which is really like the one thing you want to not do when you're making a game, especially as an indie um, scope creep and all that. Um, let's see. And also, as I, as I uh, sort of alluded to, it, it sort of sets the tone for people following along so that they know more or less what to expect and also more or less when. Um, which I think helps viewership. Um, at least um, someone who comes along later, if they, if they see the episode zero and see that this is where we're going to be at this time, and then um, they look at where you currently are and you are, it sort of gets things started on the right foot, you know? Anyway, um, a couple other things that I probably should have done a little bit differently with regards to project management is uh, discuss code naming conventions. I've got my own pretty well-traveled um, set of code naming conventions that I use in Game Maker projects, and it differs a little bit from what most people do um, in, in Game Maker, and it probably wouldn't be a bad idea if I just took two or three minutes to address that at the beginning. Um, this didn't become a problem or anything, but... Um, I think it, it would have it would have been nice to establish that early on, uh, just to, you know, suppress possible confusion uh, regarding these things. And also, Sprint 3, and I'm going to put the book down and say, like, Sprint 3 in air quotes, um, probably should have been broken up into multiple subsections. I say Sprint loosely because it lasted, like, six months um, because I'm only doing one of these a week, and sprints and agile like programming project management are, are usually much much shorter and it kind of like we we got stuff done week over week but it kind of felt like we weren't getting anywhere uh towards the middle of that like towards the dog days of north american summer um 
especially because like we've been we've been in there for so long compared to the first two and especially when i like forgot things and had to add new tasks halfway through and then like week over week the progress bar would move backwards instead of forwards because of that and that was kind of annoying um probably could have broken up the content phase into multiple two or three other um sub subsections would have been nice um let's see i think I had some other project management notes in here but these notes were really just written down in the order that I thought about them, so I don't have, um, I did not project manage this post-mortem very well, you might say. Um, hack and plan. The, uh, the software that I use to, like, base the project management on, I like it. And I would totally do it again for another Let's Make a Game project, but I also want to show more other tools that are possibly something that you can use for these things. There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, there's a couple that I won't be using. Uh, the ones that I like to call the big three, Trello, uh, Monday.com, and Asana, I will not be using just because everybody already knows about them, and I don't have anything really new to add to the conversation regarding that. And um, mm, it's not that like I don't like I don't dislike Trello and that kind of thing. I, I use it for a lot of other like YouTube things, but I just I don't see really. It's just going to be like a checklist at that point. I might as well just do project management on like post-it notes on like the wall behind me. And um, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to try and investigate some tactics that maybe aren't as well known. But I'll get to that in a future video. Um, probably in about a week, I'll post something else about the next one of these projects that I'll do, and we can we can hash that out then. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, something else. Um, and this came up a couple times, not like constantly, but often enough that. I would like to uh, call it out here. This is not a tutorial series, at least not in the traditional sense. If anything, these videos are really a project management tutorial, and I prefer to think about them that way. And um, there have been people who have sort of come away from some of these videos under the impression that like this is like the exact definitive way to make a, a bullet hell game, or maybe less so in the tower defense because that was a, the project was set up a little bit more weirdly then. But that is very much not the case. This is a series of videos that shows how I am getting things done. This is how I am like creating these systems so that you have like the, the level struct the level structure and the player, the player data and the other stuff going on in the background. And this is how we are like um, having them work together to, to create a game, which is a functional a functional game. And I think it came out pretty good uh, in the end. Um, obviously, this was only about maybe 50 or 60 hours a week total. And like for someone who wasn't producing it the way that I was, you could. this is about two weeks of work. And um, if you spent, God forbid, four weeks or six months on something like this, you could have something that was a lot fancier. But um, that's, that's what I think the, uh, if there's one like, really useful bit of content in this series is that's where I think it is like how to structure something like this instead of just um, where to put the semicolons how to uh, cross your eyes and dot your t's or whatever I think I butchered that um, but yeah I'd like to call that out especially at the beginning of the next project and ideally I will remember to mention something like that at the beginning of all of the all of the videos for the duration of um, whatever other projects like this I do um, Oh yes, uh, this apparently happened a few times. Um, some people complained that I uh, did what I called cutting out the boring parts, which were, which mostly involved just me staring at code for 10 minutes and not saying anything, because, I don't know. If you want to follow along these videos, that's great, but you shouldn't be just be copying what I do verbatim, because you're not going to learn anything that way about why I'm doing things. Um, same as Same as all the other videos that I make, honestly. I can tell when people copy and paste my code and don't actually think about what they're doing. Um, it's pretty obvious when people leave comments like that. Um, let's see. Things that went badly. This is always everyone's favorite part of these, isn't it? Uh, there were a few things that I just completely forgot about to put on the project management board. I kind of mentioned this, and that kind of... There wasn't a ton of things like this, but it made things maybe a little bit more, like, you know, headache-inducing. Uh, then it had to be when I forgot to do something, when I forgot to put something down at the beginning and then like halfway through sprint three, I had to like add a bunch of a bunch of cards and then like the project, um, the progress bar slid backwards because of that. And that's maybe a little bit demoralizing. Um, like to avoid that. Uh, 
And if I if I had maybe spent a little bit more time uh, thinking about some of the more uh, nuanced things that were going to have to be done, uh, especially pertaining U to UI, I remember this happening quite a few times with uh, UI stuff. Um, would have been nice to be a little bit more accurate in the projections, I suppose. And also, uh, people like it when the progress bar goes up. They don't like it so much when the progress bar goes backwards, or at least I don't. Um, yeah, the UI, it worked pretty well in Bombardier, and I copied it pretty much one-to-one -one from Bombardier into uh, Buggy as Hell. But I feel like I spent a lot more time fighting with it this time around, uh, which is unfortunate. And the next game I make won't have anything to do with this kind of UI regardless. And, um, <clears throat> I have not had a lot of drink today. And I should do that if I'm going to spend a lot of time talking. Um, the next game that I make will not have a UI like this just to begin with, and I suppose that the system as it was has, I guess, served its purpose. It's made it through two games, but... It did become a bit of a pain to work with, and I will not be um, upset to see the back of it. Um, but that's that's really not, I wouldn't call that a, a bad thing, that's just like a neutral, because not all U UI systems are best suited for all games. Um, yeah, the next, the next game I make will have a different UI system, I think. Let's see, as for making videos themselves, um... <clears throat> They got a little long towards the end, I'm sure a lot of you noticed that. Uh, towards the beginning, that tends to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes long, and we got um, a specific, like, atomic piece of the game done in that 20 to 30 minutes, but towards the end, they, they started to drag on a little 40, 50 minutes, an hour, some of them even. Um, not counting the level design live streams, because those I just assumed were going to be much longer because of the nature of the beast. Um, I don't enjoy hour-long videos, I don't really like editing them because it takes a long time, and I don't really think a lot of people like watching them. Um, I do have data on how long people watch these videos, and I don't think it really is worth it to post something that's an hour long. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of just how things go, because it's towards the end of the project. Um, it's a lot less structured and predictable, and you have to fix bugs, and you don't necessarily know, like, how long that's going to take to do that and, and that kind of thing and you, don't, and you don't know what other problems are going to emerge whereas at the beginning if there's a bug you usually know exactly where it's coming from and you don't have to spend time hunting for it um there's a couple ways that i could potentially break that up just by making stretching them into more videos which i don't really want to do um because that would just make it like stretch out in the like sideways direction like it'll make it take more calendar weeks instead of making it take more hours of the day um, I could, like, save all the bugs for one, like, uber bug episode and make it just, like, post a three-hour video of nothing but fixing bugs, and that's going to be, like, 90% of the bug fixes in the whole project. Um, not sure if that's the best way to do it either, but I might consider it. And, uh, there's also the option, which I'm not going to do, of just cutting out stuff like that, because I think it is important to show, uh, in games just how much of development is the not fun, not glamorous, grindy part of just looking for glitches and figuring out how to fix them. I think that is going to do it for today. Uh, that is all I've written down. Um, I hope there wasn't anything that I forgot because, like, you know that as soon as I, as soon as I turn off the camera and as soon as I, like, upload the video, I'm going to think of, like, three other things that I wanted to bring up but didn't. But, um, if that's the case, I guess I missed my chance. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want to play the final product, I will have a link to the itch.io page down in the video description. By the way, I did finally um, uh, create a Linux build for that, which I did not have time to do. Um, at the um, Eve words in the last the building episode. Speaking of which, uh, that also should have been split into two. I don't remember why I didn't. And Bombardier, I did. I had a separate video for building the game and a separate one for publishing the game, and I. Um, Neither of them turned out to be like 50 minutes in total, which, uh, again, I would prefer. I don't remember why I fused them together this time. I probably just wasn't paying attention, to be honest. Anyway, all that will be done. I, uh, other than that, I like to post videos on uh, the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, particularly dealing with things like shaders and 3D stuff and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. Um, if you don't like my face, I'm sorry. I try to only go in front of the camera once or twice a year if I have to. Um, other than that, I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later.
Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Jonathan Bernardez, Kiexi, Sindra Larson, Square Crowd, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.